Metropolitan Calanc National Park, uh, near Marseille. Um, but very often, it is this kind of landscape, uh, as a pie, as shaped uh, mosaic of landscape for millennia. It is also in the National Park. So southern France uh, is composed of 15 administrative uh, districts we call uh, departments. And uh, it's uh, the area the most impacted by uh, forest fire. And uh, so we are on average more than 60% uh, of the fire uh, located in the southeast. The other uh, area affected uh, by uh, forest fire is the southwest. But in the north, kind of um, uh, not very uh, affected by this problem. So all these um, departments are characterized by uh, social environmental condition. And as you can see, there is a high uh, variation uh, of this condition. And this um, condition uh, allow uh, the area to be divided into three different uh, regions with uh, different um, sensitivity to fire. And uh, to the region the most affected is the south, the southeastern part here, both in terms of uh, burnt area and uh, in terms of uh, fire occurrence, as you can see on this graph. So, how I explain this uh, Mediterranean context for five? First, we have a Mediterranean climate. <coughs> this is a severe climatic condition during summer with high temperature, long uh, drought period, uh, a lot, often with a lot of wind. We also have a vegetation that is adapted to this uh, Mediterranean, Mediterranean climate. And uh, this, the species living in, this, uh, Medi in the Medi Mediterranean ecosystem um, are adapted to function uh, with low moisture content and uh, can uh, limit their water loss if seen during summer. Two leaf characteristic mostly. They can have a needle like uh, lid, like the, the pine or the juniper. They can have kind of a sticky leaves, like the, these sisters, or uh, waxy leaves, or uh, hairy leaves. Uh, do, these are uh, in order to limit the water loss. But this vegetation is also adapted to the high fire regime, which is a prone fire regime in the south of France. And this uh, prone uh, regime has a selected uh, resilient species, like the, the pine trees and uh, uh, they, they use a post fire regeneration. Uh, they're resi resilient because of their post fire regeneration. The pine trees uh, got serotonous cones that open uh, when the fire arrives and the seeds are released uh, on the ground, uh, which is burnt and <laughs> the soil is very rich because of the, the ash. And when the seedling uh, uh, the, the, the seedling can grow with no competition at all, uh, as you can see here. So the pine got uh, aerial seed bank, but we also have other species that got soil seed bank, like the, the sisters. And same thing, the, the seed gonna germinate uh, when the fire arrives. Also, um, we have a species that um, are adapted to this uh, chrome pie through uh, uh, resprouting ability after pie, like the oaks 
for a lot of shrimp. So um, the resilient species <laughs> and their characteristics are very different from the, the resistant species that can sustain a fire, but that kind of burn because they, they burn their, they die. Uh, like we had, uh, you have in cotton, for example, with the Pinus silvestris. And these uh, species are uh, adapted to uh, surface, surface fires and not farm fires. Another feature of the Mediterranean context for forest fire is, in the south of France, is the increasing proportion of wildland urban interface. The wildland urban interface is the, the area where um, the housing intermingles with the, the forest, for example. And uh, in France, we define a really, um, as a um, when the housing is situated at less than 200 meters from the from the forest, so in green, that the wild the world is. And um, mapping uh, this wildland urban interface allows us to show that the increase is quite high, with a, a 10 percent increase in uh, 10 years. Because uh, people live, live in this uh, wild and urban interface, they are a uh, high stakes area. And uh, the high vulnerability of the Rui and the high probability of ignition is in this area uh, makes uh, make, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Rui a high fire risk area. Indeed, these uh, we uh, are highly impacted by fires, as we are on average up to 50 percent of the fire occurrence in the wild and urban interface, which is quite high. And most of these ignition are uh, human caused; they are due to negligence. For example, people walking. Uh, uh, in their garden or, or walking in the forest or in the, in the agriculture can, uh, can um, set a fire, but uh, uh, involuntary for the fire. Or they also, um, the, the other cause, of which, is, which can be the, the main cause in, south of, in some parts of southern France, is the arson, so people voluntarily set fire for different uh, motives. So almost, uh, more, usually more than 90% uh, of the fire are human caused in southern France. <laughs> and this uh, wooey fire can uh, provoke uh, extensive uh, damage in, the, in this area, uh, sometimes with a uh, of so loss of light. And these uh, we fire are also a worldwide issue, as we uh, witnessed um, last year in California or the, the previous years in Portugal or in Greece. And here is a picture from Australia in Marysville during the Black Saturday. And uh, this time it was completely wiped out from the fire. So now I'm going to have some more uh, kind of focus on the Rui fire issue in the southeastern France. So as I said previously, we are a fire risk area because we have a high population density in this area that shows uh, multiple ignition source and also we have here uh, multiple stakes. But the other feature of the Rui is the ornamental vegetation, which is completely different from the wilder vegetation in species and structure. 
and uh, it provides uh, an additional fuel for the flight propagation around the, the building. The ornamental vegetation is composed of both nati native species, like the pine, the oak, or different uh, species of shrub, shrubland, and um, also it's composed of exotic species that can be native from other uh, Mediterranean area, uh, like the cypress, or the oleander, or um, that can be species from far away, <laughs> like the bamboo. Oh. So it's a mix of different types of species. And these species are diff and present different features around the, the housing. You can have linear to uh, continuity like the, the hedges, the ornamental hedges. <laughs> You're gonna have uh, individual trees, clumps of plants, or vines that fit uh, on the wall. And uh, all this uh, vegetation is um, acts as a vector for fire propagation from the wildlife to the housing, and that's the problem. And this fuel continuity can be on the ground, but can also be in the crown of the, of the vegetation. And um, this continuity of vegetation can lead, in some case, can lead the fire up to the city center through, uh, for example, here, the ornamental uh, edges uh, along the road. That's actually a picture taken during the Rognac fire that occurred in 2016 in Vitrolles, near Marseille. And uh, the fire uh, occurred in the wild underground interface and uh, went uh, through um, the ornamental vegetation the, up to the city center. There was a lot of building uh, destroyed, schools, and uh, and. A, a big issue in, in the middle this part. So um, this vegetation plays a key role in the fire propagation. They can uh, lead to uh, extensive damage to the building and even to the destruction, complete destruction of this building. So it's, it's kind of uh, mandatory now to uh, better understand uh, how it burns, in fact. How it burns in order to tell the, uh, uh, the species that burned uh, well, that, that are highly flammable from, like this one, <laughs> from the, the species that are, uh, that are uh, less flammable. But sometimes it's kind of tricky. For example, this tree, it's the Italian uh, cypress, Ficris um, sempervirens, it's a beautiful tree. This species is um, present a, a lot near the house in the, in the south. This species got a very thick leaves full of water. So, uh, so which is good. But this species, because of the structure, the architecture of the canopy, uh, with its tight, very tight branches, it retains a, a lot of um, dead leaves. A huge amount of dead leaves are uh, returned in the canopy and they are um, very dry because it's dead. This huge amount of, uh, amount of dead fuel, it's bad <laughs> because it's very flammable. And uh, when it catches on fire, it burns like a torch and it releases a lot of energy because of the huge amount of dead fuel in the canopy. 
and that can provoke damage within the, the treaty of 1828. So we need to uh, mitigate uh, the fire propagation in the wine and the uh, remains of faith, especially near uh, the, the buildings. So we need to design a firewall, firewall garden. How can we do that? <laughs> We can do that in rightly selecting and positioning the, the plants around the building, but also in rightly uh, structuring this ornamental vegetation around the house. So, uh, some example now. We need to avoid um, to have a lot of fruit biomass close to the housing. We need to avoid the highly flammable species because they're going to catch on fire very quickly because they can uh, take out a um, large biomass. They can release a lot of energy and that's bad uh, if they are located too close from the building because they can provoke damage to the building. So low fuel uh, biomass or no fuel at all close to the building. If you want to have a big cypress, that's right, but very far from the, from the house. Regarding the structure of the ornamental vegetation, you have to avoid the fuel proximity that can lead the fire from the wild arm to the, to the housing. So the, this um, uh, horizontal Continuity uh, provided by the ornamental hedges, you have to avoid it when it leads to the house, or you have to break <laughs> this fuel continuity in order to mitigate or to break the, the fire propagation. <laughs> but sometimes you also have uh, this kind of uh, fuel continuity, which is a wood pipe, and that's very unwise to do that. Because it can it can be the fire directly to the house. Um, you also have to avoid the fuel uh, the fuel buildup uh, in the canopy, on the ground, the roof, because it provides a vertical fire uh, fuel continuity and it increases the fuel biomass. Um, that can be used by the fire. In southeastern France, we have a, a regulation, which is the mandatory blush clearing in the wildland urban interface. And the goal to this uh, regulation is to uh, decrease the fuel biomass around the housing and uh, provide um, cooperation between the, the, the and the, the vegetation, and uh, it, it's really important to to respect this kind of uh, regulation to be uh, safe during the during the fire. So um, the regulation says that we need to clean the vegetation around. In, um, meter radius around the house <laughs> when it's located at less than 200 meters from the forest and um, 10 meters across the, the road or the lane that goes to the, to the house. And um, the, this regulation they also says that, so that's a mandatory radius. And you also have separation between the uh, distance between the, the vegetation, the clumps of vegetation, between uh, the roof and the tree canopy. You need to remove the dead fuel. You need to have the canopy at more than two meters from the floor. All these elements are to avoid uh, the propagation of the fire from forest to the house and from plants to 
on the files in uh, southeastern France. We have um, a file database, a regional file database called Promete, which records um, the file since 1973. And as you can see uh, in this picture, there is a, a decreasing trend, both in terms of number of files and uh, in uh, burnt area. 1973. But we can see here and, and then um, uh, some uh, episode of uh, high number of five or large French areas, which are due to extreme weather condition. For example, in 2003, um, there was a, a very long flood period with several uh, heat waves during that year and a lot of uh, wind, and uh, that led to uh, extensive, uh, very extreme fire. So, how can you, how can we explain this decreasing trend uh, during this uh, period? First of all, uh, since 1985, we have a uh, better fire prevention, especially in the wild and urban interface, with the implementation of new regulations at that time, regulation of brush, brush, brush clearing in the wild and urban interface, the use of fine summer is restricted, and the access to, for, to the forest is also restricted in the in the summer. So um, that's the mandatory brush clearing in well and well the phase as I explained before. And as you can see here, it's kind of a very efficient uh, during the fire. In breaking the breaking the fire creation. We also have to um, more means allocated to do fire prevention at that time, with more fire forest track, more uh, water system, more water towers, you know, to um, survey the, the fire condition. We also <laughs> forecast the fire weather index on a daily on a daily basis, uh, following up the vegetation dryness as it is also carried out at the European level. We all can also explain this decreasing trend uh, uh, of fire by uh, better fire suppression since 1991, with more means allocated to the suppression, more aircraft, more trucks, more firefighters, and we also, we, uh, at that time, we also had a, a change in the tactics of fire suppression with the attack of the fire uh, as early as possible. Normally, the firefighter arrived on the fire less uh, than uh, 10 minutes after its suppression. But um, even with the best fire prevention and the best suppression we can have in southern France. Sometimes we have um, these uh, extreme fire events that occur uh, during the extreme weather condition and, uh, and, and the firefighters they can do anything to, to stop the fires in, in this condition. The wind is too strong, the vegetation is too dry, so <coughs> Very, very, very well. Here's um, the picture of the fire in Rognac, as I um, spoke before. It's a uh, uh, mission point is here in, in Rognac <laughs> near the spot, and it burned um, 2,060 hectares in one day and ended up in Marseille. 
and all so um, two thousand hectare of the park occur in the Wayan River interface, and part of that is the urban. So um, the extreme weather condition led, led, led to extreme fires, uh, which are very difficult um, to fight by the firefighters. So we need to rethink the prevention of the extreme fires, especially in the wild and urban and the fair, and the phase where the, uh, the stakes are, are the highest. How that, that we can increase people awareness and preparedness because we lack both. We lack the awareness, we lack the preparedness. People doesn't the people don't know when they have to leave when the fire arrives. If they have to leave or not, if they have to stay and defend the house. They have no idea. <laughs> we need to have a more sustainable forest and land management in order to build a more resilient uh, ecosystem. We need to have a change in land management policy. We need to plan, better plan the, the, the wild and urban interface. We need to anticipate all of these things. And uh, in fact, we need to have an, integ an integrated uh, fire management strategy in order to be able to fight these extreme fire events in the, in the future. Thank you. The thing is, uh, in California, during the last uh, year, five or uh, like you are, you have impact every year in California, in the south of California, they they had a very extreme uh, climate condition with a, a lot of strong wind, and uh, we don't have very often this extreme condition. But we expect to have more and more with the climate change impact. So um, regarding the fire set along the road, um, there is the regulation to brush clean along uh, all the road, along the railway, along the power line. But um, I don't know if um, it improved the 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 fire prevention during the year, but as I, as I said, you have to we have to to be better than that because of the increase of the extreme fire uh, even frequency in the, in the future, and we can be more and more in the condition of um, climate condition or closer to the trends to the portable condition. So you gestured a little bit about fire suppression, about a prescribed burning, kind of unofficial. Mm -hmm. um, so what what's the kind of policy there? Is that is that a way to yeah, we have, control fuel loads? Yeah, we have um, uh, legal uh, prescribed burning, but it's not as as um, as frequent as should be. It's uh, very used in, Cors in the Corsica island, for example. Very used in the mountain Pyrenees or in the Alps, but not very often uh, in the other area. And it should be. So who does that? Who is that the forestry department? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, forestry department. So it's organized and it's Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have this, this fight that can uh, <laughs> escape. And that the problem is why some uh, People are fighting to use this kind of uh, uh, control. Um, at the beginning of your presentation, you showed a picture of Australia after Black Friday or whatever. Black Friday. Black Friday. <laughs> Black Saturday. <Yeah>. Very different. <laughs> uh, but the um, no, in the photo, it, sort of all the buildings were destroyed, but there's actually a lot of vegetation remaining around them. And I was wondering why that is. I don't know. About it's um, because you, sometimes you ask uh, the, the fire propagation building to building, and it's very typical from uh, Australia or the US because the, the houses are uh, moved. So 
the, the propagation is better but, like that. But why right. doesn't it affect the the trees around them? Uh, like some, the are, some are, some are, like the trees are closed, they, they, yeah. they know they, maybe they don't survive. The thing is, uh, I didn't explain that. Um, the, the efficiency of the, uh, the, the brush clearing around, around the house um, is that it's gonna decrease the fire propagation, the flame from propagation from other house. Yeah. But the other problem in the during a, uh, a wood fire is the fire spotting. You have a lot a lot of amber coming from the forest to the wild animal defense and they're gonna sh shower of fire brands um, and uh, land in the garden or land on the house. And if it's not a, a fire wise uh, building, you're gonna yeah. And it's the problem in the in the US and the in Australia. And and as the, the, the house are very close yeah. to one from another from the other. So, so some of them, some of the buildings are more flammable than the vegetation. Yeah, which is <laughs> because there's a lot of fuel in the house. Yeah. Um, do you know what influences the brush clearance distance uh, regulation? So, for example, why is it fifteen meters rather than hundred? Uh, sometimes, um, it's between. Usually it's 50 meters, sometimes it's uh, 100 meters. <laughs> and it was in fact a kind of uh, an average made uh, from a, a, an average distance for the fire brand uh, propagation, <laughs> which in fact is not so right because if there is a lot of wind, the, the, the fire brand can, can go uh, much further than. Okay. So one more. Um, so I'm from Greece originally, and I know that some fires there, some of the big fires, for instance, start from power cables. Yeah. It just basically spark. Yeah. You know, when it's a hot day. So is that a problem? France as well, or have, have they avoided putting them in, in the wrong places? No, no. We have um, uh, that part of the, we, we call that the accidental part. Um, that means that it's not a, a, a man that set the fire, but something human, uh, like the, the power line or like the railway. And um, that is not a very common. Uh, by emission. Okay. It's something like um, between 5 and 10%. Okay. But uh, it, it, yeah, it can, uh, it can occur. Is that part of the, I guess it's because they plan the forest or the power lines to not go There is no regulation to, to brush clear around uh, 10 meter. Uh, right. in, uh, around the, the, the power line or uh, around the, the railway because of that. But for example, it's um, one of the main fire codes in California because during the big storm in the, due to the Santa Ana winds, the, the power line break yeah. and uh, it gets set by and it's main code because they got these strong winds every year and we don't have this. Uh, Thank you.